These past few months, I've given in to my urge to start a new Minecraft world. It's an urge that pops up sometimes once or twice a year at this point. Sometimes it's because they're promising new and interesting features, and other times it's because the cold weather has set in and brought a little bit of seasonal depression with it. But regardless of how Minecraft pulls me back into its world, it always brings me a great sense of comfort and nostalgia. I've been playing the game since 2011, right before 1.0 dropped, and really it's one of the strongest points of connection I have back to that time of my life. But how did this open world game with pixel graphics form such a strong nostalgic connection with myself and so many others? Well, there's probably lots of answers, I'm sure, but I think a large part of it boils down to the music and how it's used to create certain feelings that relate us to nostalgia and comfort. I've talked on this channel before about how music, or the lack of it, can create fear and horror in the player. But Minecraft uses music sparingly to create both isolation and comfort at the same time, creating strong nostalgic connections with the player. And I want to talk about why that works. An important part of how Minecraft's music feeds into our nostalgia is the way it's written and arranged and then used in-game, all of which are pretty unique for the time. Where a lot of games use highly melodic or rhythmic music, Minecraft's soundtrack is inspired more by ambient artists like Vangelis, who is best known for Chariots of Fire and Blade Runner, and Brian Eno, whose most well-known work is probably the Windows 95 startup sound. These two artists are a huge influence on Daniel Rosenfield, who wrote the soundtrack for Minecraft under the name C418. But another huge influence on the game is a video game called Dwarf Fortress. If you don't know what Dwarf Fortress is, it is the long-running... Freaking chair. I should get a yoga ball, those don't make noise. If you don't know what Dwarf Fortress is, it is the long-running passion project of brothers Tarn and Zach Adams. It's a simulation game where you manage a colony of fantasy dwarves as they go about their days mining stuff and drinking lots of beer. And it is infamously difficult to get into for a few reasons. Among them are its incredibly detailed level of simulation and the immense difficulty that results from that, and also its incredibly crude ASCII graphics that it had up until 2022. But C418 was musically inspired by a certain contrast that Dwarf Fortress makes. And despite its honestly kind of unpleasant graphics, Dwarf Fortress actually has a quite nice soundtrack played on what sounds like a very old acoustic guitar. And this contrast of ugly graphics and beautiful music is something that C418 wanted to expand on for Minecraft. In a talk at the Game City Festival in Nottingham in 2014, Keith Stewart recounts for The Guardian that C418 explained that people probably expected chiptune music, so I decided to work with experimental, simplistic, acoustic music. And I think this contrast is why, despite being ambient music, Minecraft's soundtrack kind of ironically sticks out so much. Now, on one hand, you have very airy, synthesizer-driven tracks like Subwoofer Lullaby and Moog City. And on the other hand, you have very acoustic, organic tracks like Sweden and Wet Hands. And all of these songs are playing while you're exploring a pixelated cubic world cobbled together by maths and algorithms. Regardless, a huge centerpiece of the Minecraft soundtrack is what sounds to me like an upright piano. And those are like nostalgia cheat codes, at least in my opinion. On some songs like Dry Hands and Wet Hands, the piano sounds a little bit out of tune, like the one you grew up plinking away on probably was. And on other songs, there's a slight ambient reverb, like it's being played on the other side of the room while you're playing the game. And in a lot of cases, the piano has a warmer sound that I think is kind of characteristic of upright pianos, and that's no doubt emphasized with some equalization. All of these things come together to make the piano feel warm and close, and they add to this kind of like comfy, cozy feeling that Minecraft gets sometimes. Then there's also how Minecraft deploys its music. It doesn't loop like it does in most other games. These songs have beginnings, middles, and ends, and they play the entire way through, and then they stop. And the game has different pools of songs depending on where you are in the world. For example, Minecraft's Nightmare Hellscape Dimension, The Nether, has a different pool of songs than the idyllic overworld, which has its own pool of songs. 
Every 10 to 20 minutes or so, a song is randomly selected from the pool, it plays in its entirety, and then finishes. And then the timer resets, another 10 to 20 minutes later, another song plays, and so on and so forth. You'd think maybe this would get annoying a little bit, and I could see that and understand that, but I think it's actually quite nice. Because this is ambient music, it's non-looping, and it kind of fades into the background really intentionally, you kind of don't really notice it until something interesting happens. And that's the magic of the Minecraft soundtrack. This idea is something completely intentional on C418's part. In that same talk in Nottingham, he explained that his hope was that the player would identify the music specifically with events they themselves created. Imagine you're building a house and the sun starts setting and the music comes in. I know I've had moments like that before with Minecraft soundtrack. One specific memory I love is years ago when I was playing with my older brother and his friends, we were in the depths of a dark, deep, maze-like cave, and our inventories were stuffed with loot and we couldn't find our way out, supplies were running low. And then we start to recognize where we are, and as we're crawling out of the cave and into the safety of our hillside cave base that we had constructed together, the low piano chords of Moog City were starting to ring out. It felt amazing and epic. But I think the strongest emotion that the Minecraft soundtrack evokes is comfort. And I think a really big part of that is the instruments that are used on the soundtrack, especially the upright piano that I mentioned earlier. Another part of that sense of comfort is how music is used. If Minecraft had music all the time, it'd probably get old pretty fast and you would want to turn it off. But because it comes in and out so infrequently and at random, you kind of start to almost miss it when it's gone. The game is intentionally creating long silences, leaving you alone in an already lonely world only to then occasionally break that silence with a song to soundtrack whatever it is you might be up to. It reminds me of a loved one poking their head in to check on you while you work on a hobby or get some work done. Except in this case, it's a song coming in to soundtrack you while you build a cabin with your friends, or explore a cave, or build a castle that's way too big, and now you've hollowed out an entire mountain just to get all the stone you need to build it, and that's not even mentioning all of the coal that you had to track down, because for some reason you decided to use stone bricks instead of cobblestone, and you gotta smelt it somehow. Couldn't be me. I think if Minecraft's soundtrack could be summed up into just one word, it'd be nostalgic. It's something that sticks with you and begins to soundtrack your memories. Music and nostalgia go hand in hand. We all remember the shows and movies we grew up watching and the games we immersed ourselves in and the bands and artists we grew up listening to. And regardless of the medium, the music is probably what brings you back to those memories easier than any other thing. If you clicked on this video, I probably only need to play a handful of notes to bring a lot of memories rushing back to you. And if you grew up an emo kid like me, you probably only need one note. I feel like the nostalgia and comfort of Minecraft soundtrack will always mean something different to us as we move through life and attach different memories and stages of our life to this game. For me, in summer 2011, it was to get on the bandwagon. All of my friends in middle school were talking about the sprawling castles they had built in this game called Minecraft. And after that, I spent weeks on end watching the entirety of X's adventures in Minecraft just to get a taste of the game before finally asking my parents to buy it for me. Just a year later in 2012, Minecraft became an escape for me, as my family spent the better part of a year uprooted in the aftermath of a house fire. And now, 12 years later, I'm 27, and a few years into living on my own with my wife in a new city as we try to make our way in the world. And in this stage of my life right now, the idea of building a shelter for yourself and building up your corner of the world is comforting to me. The idea of turning a strange and uncaring land into a familiar one that you can call home. It doesn't matter if we're playing the game to spend time with loved ones, or relive old memories, or to seek comfort in a world that is kind of difficult sometimes, or even just to have fun. We all come back to this game at different parts of our lives for different reasons, all of that soundtracked by the game's music. Now, I don't think it's controversial to say at this point that Minecraft's soundtrack, or at least the first volume of it, is one of the best video game soundtracks ever written. And despite how odd and ambient it is, it is incredibly popular. A copy of the soundtrack's volume alpha is pretty consistently sold out on vinyl pretty much everywhere you go. And a lot of these songs have tens or even hundreds of millions of streams on Spotify. 
and hand pretty much anybody under 35 of Kalimba and they're probably going to try to play Hackstrom on it. But despite all that popularity, what I think sets it apart is how C418 intentionally tried to create an experience where we would tie our memories and our nostalgia to these songs. And the really cool part is that it worked. We all have vastly different experiences tied to our nostalgia for these songs. Different stages of life and experiences and circumstances and this will continue on for as long as people are playing Minecraft, which might be forever at this point. In 20 years, the kids who are playing Minecraft right now will have their own memories and experiences tied to Minecraft's soundtrack. Not just the songs that we grew up on, but to the new additions to the soundtrack that have been made by Lena Rain and Aaron Cheroff. I know that I find a lot of comfort in Minecraft and have a lot of nostalgia and experiences that are tied to its soundtrack, and I'm very grateful for that. But I think what excites me more than anything is to keep playing the game in the future. Yeah, it might not be a perfect game, but I hold it close anyway, and I'm excited to see what else I can mine out of it as I get older and reconnect with it and experience it in different ways. If you've got a favorite memory playing Minecraft or a favorite song off of the soundtrack, I would love to know what it is in the comments. I love hearing how music connects people. It's one of my favorite things that attests to the power of music. Anyway. Thanks for watching me ramble about Minecraft and nostalgia and music. I hope you liked it and found something useful in there. If you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to like this video. And if you want to stay in tune with what I'm up to, be sure to subscribe. I post every other week alternating between video game music covers and video essays like this one. And if you are subscribed already and you're watching this video, you're probably here because of my Nintendo music video. I posted that video not expecting it to do like super well and it kind of blew up beyond what I ever thought it was going to happen and I think at the time of recording this video something like 250 people decided to stick around for whatever I would make next and that's just insane to me and I'm super grateful and yeah, I'm excited to make more fun stuff in the future. Thank you.